The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There's a wonderful story describing families, Jewish family escaping from Iran in 1979. 1979, the Ayatollah Khamenei took over revolution and the Shah was overthrown and he fled to save his life. And the Yidden that lived fine in Iran. Till then, many were, were hush of a business people. Now they found themselves in a massive of Sarkonis and Fashis. So there was a fellow named Avram who owned a very big store to sell very expensive carpets. And a bunch of armed thugs that would now belong to the Ayatollah broke into his store one day and they started screaming, screaming at him that he's a traitor. And without thinking, he put a gun to his head and shot him dead. The Nebuch Talmana didn't have time to even wallow in her self-pity. She put all her kaychas together to save her rest of her family. So in order to leave Iran, you had to get permission from the government. And she knows she's going to ask such a paper. They're going to throw her and her whole family into jail. So they had to figure out a way how to do it. And there was no one to be Saimachan. And somehow, this Almona asked and asked and asked, and she found out about one guy that was a smuggler, that this guy helped Yidin, and they hired him to take them from Iran to Turkey through the mountains. This lady, who a few days before was sitting in a massive of wealth and opulence, now she remained come out without anything. She couldn't sell her big store and her big house, and she couldn't sell the furniture. And the smugglers told her, don't even pack one suitcase, because the neighbors will see you walking out of your house with a suitcase. They'll call the police, notify right away. No, when she put in a purse all of her jewelry, her diamonds, whatever she had, that went to Yerushim and and she called her kids, and she told them, without saying where they're going, she said, come, let's go out to buy something, shopping. And that's how this lady left Iran with her family. With the knowledge, she's never going to return. That night, they made up to meet at a certain point, And the guy accepted the top dollar that he charged. They made up beforehand. And the escape from Iran started. The mishpacha, this Walter mishpacha, that was used to a finicky, spoiled lifestyle. They had servants in the house. They were warned to follow every single order and instructions. And you're not going to get any big cars here. And there's no trucks and there's no buses. You're now going to see what it means to travel like a primitive person. So the first part of the thing trip was they rode on camels. For 18 hours straight. Very difficult hours. And it caused the mother to have pushed pain in her back. <laughs> that never went back. Never got better. And she was complaining. The guy said, if one more complaint I hear from you, the guy, the smuggler said, I'm going to put a bullet in my gun and I'm going to park it in your head and that's going to be over for you. Your escape. If somebody complained, he can't do it, it's hard, his feet. One guy even fell off the mm. camel and he hurt his hand bed. Bad. I didn't know what he had stories. And he was suffering from the hot, burning sun in the desert, the mountains. They had no water, enough water. They didn't have and by night, it was, it was very cold, and it was not Ishmaq to ride in the mountains at night. And these guys were riding their animals on these little thin little mountain passes, one step wrong, and it's finished. And the guy, the way the guy was treating them was very rough. With Sad Echad, the guy sheared the water that he had equally with himself and everybody. And he gave him bread from his bread to them. And when they finished their food that they had taken with them, couldn't take too much, he taught them things they have to know to live in the desert. And on the other hand, his mouth constantly was uttering threats and caused, caused them to be mamish petrified for the guy. At one point, they came to a river that the water was cold like ice. And this river, he said, he told the people, we have to get to the other side of the river. That's why we have to continue our trip. What's what's the shot? How are we going to go? I friend, you're going to walk into this river in the freezing cold. You're going to walk across the thing. He said, to cross, it took quite a while to get across because the donkeys and the animals were not 
so interested in going into this freezing water. And they got into the mud, and they couldn't get him out. And after the Pasha, he climbed to the other side of the river, with great difficulty, and he got the donkeys out now. It was the first time with camels, and they went to switch donkeys. And the guy told him, everybody get off the donkeys. And they had to walk barefoot on mommy's sharp stones. Your feet were bleeding away. The pains were gefelig. And the guy didn't stop with his threats. And he said, you can't rest. You got to watch it called. The youngest g- girl was three years old. She couldn't go anymore. And the mother and the older brother were carrying her by turns. And they finally would go and climb up this real high mountain. And on top of the mountain, there was a small bridge, a string bridge that connected that mountain to another mountain that was opposite it. And they had to get there. The mother looked at these old pieces of wood holding hold together the stickle string bridge. And the guy said, follow me across the bridge. And they looked down in, on the bottom of the bridge and they saw this deep, deep valley, Shrek. And one of the kids, the mother, finally lost her, herself. And she started screaming, die, it's enough. Can't do it anymore. That's the end. We're not going anymore. The guy, Pasha, pulled out a gun. He put a bullet in the gun. And he put the barrel straight for her head. And he said, I want you to know that I know how to more than threaten. My, my, my knowledge is not just limited to threatening. He said, quietly, I know how to be Makai in my words. If you're not going to get going, I'm killing you on this spot, miyat. They all became silent. The mother was shaking like a, a lulav. But she put her hands out to the kids. And with superhuman kaiches, she crossed this little stream bridge from one mountain to across a big crossing another mountain. And the guy kept on pushing them. No stopping, keep going. Don't look down, look ahead, keep going. They traveled for two and a half weeks with this guy. Two and a half weeks nonstop. And they finally got out of Iran and they ended up in Turkey. And they were able to breathe. When the smuggler was about to say goodbye, what happened next was off the charts. This guy was screaming for two and a half weeks and threatened them to kill him and this and that. Bowed down in front of them. And each one of the kids, he hugged and gave him a kiss. And he was he benched the almona in a soft voice. at Shishmat Sliak and all her drach. And then in a choked up voice, he said, before I'm leaving you, I'm separate, I want to tell you something, a secret that no one knows about till the second. You are my own flesh and blood. I'm a yid just like you. I was forced, sorry, sadly, to conduct myself in this way, even to threaten you. But you should know the pain when I saw your pain was unbelievable. But if I would have told you that I was a yid and I'm a friend of yours, you would have said, you're not going any further. You just can't. And tears filled his eyes and he said goodbye to a warm goodbyes. And he went back into Iran to help other yid. Everybody in his life sometimes goes through some very difficult moments. And we try to run away from them, try to escape them, try to get around them, try to avoid them. But you have to know, that Hashem puts us on these paths. And Hashem says, you must cross and you must pass this challenge. There's no going back. You must go forward. And if you don't go fa- forward, you fail. If you go forward with the greatest of difficulties, you'll be zeicher to reach your tachlis and to be zeicher to nitzchis. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.